right? Yeah. Um, RJ, when we just talked to Mitch, and he said he felt that kind of in the first six minutes of the game, you guys didn't show up the way that you could have and, and kind of look to the early start. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Um, I think if you look at, honestly, the rest of the game, especially in the second half, we played well. I think we held them to like, I don't know, like 30 something points in the second half. So it was really just that first half, especially that first quarter. And, you know, another thing that Tim mentioned was he felt that there were times offensively when you guys struggled to get going, that there was almost too much unselfishness, that there are a lot of wide open shots that you guys passed up and mm-hmm. that, that pa- in the, in the, the play breaks down. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you feel was the struggle with the offense? Um, yeah. Honestly, exactly that. You know, uh, I think we we hesitated a little bit um, once we saw the zone, and then I mean, in the first half, we weren't getting stops. So if we play and we were playing against the zone every time down the court, you know, it was it's a lot easier when we're able to get some stops, get some rebounds, and just push so that they can't even set their zone up. Uh, you know, he was going downhill. He was going downhill. Um, they were getting a good whistle. He was going downhill, and I mean, he made he made some tough shots. He made some tough plays. So, you know, kudos to him. Happens sometimes. You know, happens sometimes, and. You know, it helps, but no no matter what, like, if you're not getting calls, we still got to, you know, figure out a way to win, you know. Uh, I think I think no matter if we're getting calls or not, we got to play defense, and we can't, you know, let a team do what they did in the first half. When a guy like Ball is out, Bridges plays a different way, mm. did he kind of catch you guys off guard a little bit, maybe more prepared for the way he plays? No, nah, he's their leading scorer. You know, he's their leading scorer, so, I mean, we knew, we knew he was going to. It's going to be aggressive, um, but, you know, he came out, he had a huge first quarter. So, you know, that really got him going. Did you think that the game was going to go differently without Lamelo playing? Uh, I was, you know, he's a great player, but, like, they still got guys. They're still good, you know, even if even if he wasn't in the, in the lineup today. So it doesn't matter as an NBA player, as an NBA team. Like, it doesn't matter who they throw out there. You know, you you got to be good, especially good at something, to be in this league. So, yeah. RJ, to have Derek Lee back and on the bench and around, what does that kind of mean to you guys in terms mm-hmm. of how you feel like you're ready to play? I mean, you know, you you've been around, you've been around a while. This as Derek Rose, you know, I remember everybody was watching him, you know, as a kid and the success he's been able to have um, in the league. So to have kind of his voice out there, uh, definitely really positive. Um, you know, it's a voice that we miss, and we miss having him out there on the court with us. But do you have him back around the team and mm-hmm. on the bench? I mean, you know, he's, he's back more mm-hmm. than he's been lately, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, been seeing him around a lot more and, right. you know, seeing him and rehabbing and stuff. So it's, it's been good. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Arthur.